after what we learned Thursday night, that the parents have to be on the same page, at least in front of the kids. It's very crucial, extremely crucial. Tonight, we're gonna to talk about self-respect. which is extremely, extremely important, maybe the most important link that belong to discipline. Self-respect. It's correct that Kavod it's something that you have to run away from, right? That's what the, the Torah will tell you. Don't chase after kavod. But which kavod? From other people. But self-respect? Self-respect? That's not what our sages were talking about this one, you yeah, have to have self-respect. Every person is obligated to have self-respect in order to live a life like a normal person in a normal society. I know that today the society is not <laughs> normal, right? So this even calling for even more responsibility for self-respect. And also it's going to be a good boundary for many, many bad characters that we have. It doesn't fit me to do something like that. So it will help you when you have self-respect and soon enough I will explain what does it mean, self-respect. So now, self-respect is the key to develop self-discipline. Do we have self Discipline. Not enough. Not enough. But some we do have, yes? Some we do have. Example, example. Are you gonna take a sandwich and while you're walking on the sidewalk outside, are you gonna eat it outside? No. Why not? I'm hungry. It's not proper to do that when outside. So you want to keep your respect so I say, I'm not gonna do it, right? I'm not gonna do it. Because the Gemara said, whoever eat on the street is like a dog because the dog is eating on the streets. So who wants to be like a dog? No one. So we are able to restrain ourselves not to eat on the street, yeah? No? Good. If somebody, if you're waiting for a parking spot and somebody, according to you, took your parking spot away, you know, some people can kill for it. 
And some people can get out with a baseball bat and break your windows. Are you going to do it? No. Why not? No, bro. Why not? Your, your self-respect self is worth discipline. Part. You have self-discipline. Yeah. Why should I go fight now for what? For parking spots? Who knows what's going to happen now? What language we gonna use now? And where it's gonna end? Why should I lower myself to such a standard? So he said, okay, no. It was not meant for me. Otherwise the parking spot will be for me. Okay, that's... But there are people who will fight with you. Who are these people? They have no self-respect. They don't care about it. Now, if we as parents, we're using bad language, do we have self-respect? No. Shavuatov. Don't sleep on me. Are we using bad language? Yes or no? When we get frustrated. No. No. Sure. No. No. So when your <coughs> child when your child gets frustrated, also we use bad language. Why are you upset at him? Hundred percent. Good. So, if you really, if you really, if a parent in front of the kids, the kids has already an image that my parents have no self-respect. Do you know what's going to happen over here? Do you know what's going to happen? Forget about discipline. Forget whatever I said until now, not belong to you. Not belong to you. Because whatever I said until now, the beginning was a person that has self-respect. Because the people, they have no value. Their words also have no value. So now I advise everybody, if you see that your children don't want to listen to you, they're not following the instructions, you have to sit down and say, maybe they're not, they don't have value for us. Maybe we are at fault because we're acting like like two wild people and not civilized. And it goes all over the place. Are you appreciating People that you see that their bichlal has no, no, let's say in your eyes, he has no value. Whatever he said, are you going bichlal to consider it? Why? Because he has no values. So we causing it to ourselves the damage because we're not acting properly. And the Torah saying it time after time, Kedoshim to you, 
Hashem says you act properly because you are my representatives. My representatives down there act and every parent's obligated, obligated. For what? To make sure that the child will look at you in a positive eyes, in a respectful eyes, and he will appreciate you. The child may disagree with you, but he will be disciplined because he knows my parents are they they acting like normal human being so now when ladies going natsanua open here open there is this called self re 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 respect? No. So maybe the children don't want to hear you because you're not not modest enough. They see that you don't have a value for yourself. So why they should listen to you? Why they have to respect you? You're not respecting yourself. Abba that comes home, right away take everything off, and he's standing there with a under under shirt and shorts, and put his two legs. God, I said that's it. I came home. What a message! What a message. When you're in your room, bedroom, do whatever you want. Close the door and do whatever you want. But in front of the kids, in front of the kids, you want them to appreciate you, to, to have respect toward you. What are you doing? We're not thinking about this. And children, they have a nose, I don't know, they sense things very fast. And then, why they have no avo not? They have no sins. The Nishama is clean, pure, pure, pure. They'll get you. So make sure to have self-respect. Wherever you go, don't scream. Don't shout, don't use bad language. And the kids will listen to you. They're looking for this kind of people. If a kid sees that Abba is acting like him, what do you expect from him? I don't understand. If he sees that Abba is acting like a grown up, he will listen. He will listen. Try it.
it's correct that it may sound that I say that we have to have distance from the kids. You know, you the authority, you do that. That's not what I'm saying. We have to be very close to our kids. But we have to create separations. Who is the authority and who is not the authority? The position. We, the parents, you, the child. Don't think that we're friends all the way. There is, must be a boundary somewhere. And this has to be done with a lot of Rukhman. You can be very close to your kids. You can joke with them. You can play with them with ball. You can do whatever you, you want, but still, There is a difference between you and me. You know, I saw something very nice. If Moshe Rabbeinu there was already in Egypt and he was in the palace raised by Paro by himself, why Hashem has to make him go to a different country all the way, right? Hare Hashem knew that he is going to be the leader. Why are you sending him out? Let him stay among the people. Hashem says, En Navi Beiro. You cannot be a person that grew up in this place and now you're going, you're going to try to be the rabbi of the place. Nobody will listen to you. Why? Because we saw you as a, as a, as a child. We got too close. When you too close, you're not able to be authority. Hashem said to Moshe, I'm sending you out of here and you're coming back in 60 years like you never been here before. And now they will accept what you're saying because you're an outsider. Don't you pay attention that sometimes people accept from outsider more than insider? Yes, bro. I think it's always like this. Always like that, yes. And I'm saying to parents, you cannot influence the child anymore. Bring somebody from the outside. He will do the job now and the child will accept from him much faster. Why? Because they, you, he is not involved. He is a new authority came to town. It's, it's very much psychology that works always. So Rabbi, better to have a rabbi between you and your kids? I didn't understand that. If you, you don't want to get too close to your kids, right? No, you have to get close, but... Have a, yeah, have, yeah, I understand. We're still the parents. We'll play, we'll joke around, but a big. big. But now, if we didn't do the right things, and now we want to, to correct them, you're gonna have a very difficult time. So now you have to bring 
somebody from the outside. Maybe a friend. Maybe a person that you know and the child I don't know. A person that can deal with a child on I understand, yeah. Yeah. Maybe like a grandparents to tell the kids something now, huh? No. Totally outsider. Outsider. You see, what we can do in 10, 10 minutes for the parents, it, it will take years. Because they already burned all the bridges. The kids do, do not uh, appreciate what they say. It, it's haval, but that's the reality. Because the biggest inf influence on the child is the way that the parents acting. Don't forget this point. You heard it for me many times. And I want to implement it again and again. It's very much to keep yourself with respect. No screaming, no shouting, but threatening, not appropriate language, which is totally a, a so Everything has to be done and the child will respect you. The parents have to be very careful not to do things, foolishness in front of the kids. You know, every person have something childish still inside. And sometimes we want to bring it out, you know, but not in front of your kids. No. If a child sees is about going to a level which is he said that's my father, that's what he is doing. Can you give us an example? Like so we're not supposed to be silly, is that what you mean? Or do you mean that we're not supposed to be angry or talking a shona, things like that? Even, you know, some people knows how to imitate. Oh, I see. So it's like a form of making fun of someone else. Yeah, you see, if I get on stage and I will start to imitate, you're going to make in your pants. I have this talent. <laughs> In the house, I never showed my talents. I, I had the urge, you know, to do what I said. I cannot do it because then the kids will look at me weird. But could I have a question? Um, in terms of the things that we do not desire for our kids to copy, we're allowed to make fun of that? Let's say, like, immodest dressing or immodest behavior, like things like that, or no. are we allowed to make fun of that? No. Also no? Okay, so we need to talk about it seriously? Do you think this kind of behavior is respectful? No. Okay, I see what you mean. That's what you can tell a child, you know? 
no one is going to appreciate it. Okay, so now my kids, each one of them is an imitator. Each one of them, I don't know, okay. My, my again, children, the imitators, why? I get on the floor. When they are starting to imitate, I'm telling you, I'm on the floor. Okay, it's a, it's a talent, you know, it's, it's a talent which I don't use anymore. I have to, you know, to, why? Because I have to, to, to represent the Torah, I have to, to, to represent re respect, as uh, I cannot. That's called, you know, self-respect. Don't let, don't let people look at you all of a sudden that you, from here, you're going all the way down. you like anybody else. And the kids are looking at the parents that they are the most important people on earth. If the parents are starting to act not normal, all the respect going down and the kids losing his, his mind. He said, and then he will not respect you. Then you can talk until they're not going to follow your instructions because they not value your words. They not value your words, which is a terrible thing. How to gain the respect back? That's a good question. It will take time. But you have to change the whole game. Now you have to, to be dressed at home, watch your mouth, don't scream, don't shout. I don't think that you that capable so fast to, to make these changes because we got used to it already. But Definitely we have to try and definitely we have to work on that because you'll be surprised. Most of the kids have no respect toward, your par toward the parents. Why? It's the parents' fault. They made themselves next to the kids worthless. That's why in the old days, now you know why the Chinuch was good once. Do you know why? People were very modest. Nobody cursed. Today, everybody. Kids, ladies, saying four letter curse from a lady. You know, I can vomit. Permit if I hear this, I'm telling you, I have to go to the bathroom. Oh, no respect. In the older days, who saw something like this? That's why we were we are obeying every instruction that we heard from the parents. Because we knew it's coming from a respectful place, from a, a normal one. We had no doubt, Bukhla, that what had been told to do is the right thing. Right away, we did it. I did not hear even one time in my life that my father once said a bad word. 
On the contrary, so if I'll hear over here bad words, I don't know what I'm going to do to you. No, no screaming, no shouting. Our house was a quiet house, no screaming, no shouting. My father just walked in. We were like soldiers, soldiers. Why? Authority. Chubat, respectful. Don't lose in school. Every kid will fall for it. Even the most kid like this, he sees this, he knows, Opa, Habibi. And the proof, I said it many times over here, is the school. In school, the behaving. In the house, no. Why not? Because the Rebbe or the Mora Mechubadim, the Mora coming all covered up. And she is represent herself. The kids will follow. Then they, they smile you from a mile away. If I want, for example, to sing and to dance with my kids. Go ahead. It's good because we are bringing atmosphere of simcha in the house. That's very good. But if I want to laugh at somebody and I want to imitate him, right? Then the child says, Something is in his own over here. Something is wrong. Even in, in my days in the in Shiva, the only days that I was allowed to imitate all the Rabbeim and everybody was only pouring. One day a year, they let me, you know, gotta express my talent. And I was on stage, a stand up east, and everybody was on the floor. Everybody. I imitate every Rebbe, the principal. Then the, the, they were laughing, mother laughing. But once a year, and at the day that you know you can be, it's, it's pouring time. Pouring, it's okay. And the child knows that you're not allowed to laugh at somebody else. And Abba himself imitating somebody else to, to make a joke out of him. <laughs> Whatever we build, trach. People think that Disciplined is gonna, okay, I'm gonna tell the child, I'll punish him, I'll do this. I'll do. That's not discipline. And now, don't forget, we're dealing with kids. They don't think like us. That's another problem. We think that they have the same head as we are. So if I think it's a joke, so the child feel also it's, it's a joke. No way. No. The child sees my father is a lightheaded. I have no respect. What is he doing? 
Pues voy a decir que claro. Oh, wow, wow. And I said, I wanted to, uh, to make you uh, laugh and everything. Kids, you have to be very careful. Harav, I also heard that if, uh, if parents or father, let's say parents talk about other people negatively, the child doesn't think, oh, my parents are smart because they, they're observed, they're observe it. They think if my parents don't like so-and-so, what do they think of me? And it gives a child low self-esteem when parents speak lotion horror about anybody else. The children gets par the child gets paranoid. Well, my mother doesn't like that person. What does she think of me? Absolutely. Now, another thing that I have to bring out, how do we behave outside of the house? Sometimes you can go to the supermarket and let's say someone cut you off. I, I, I saw it a few times and the lady started to scream while the kids are there. Excuse me, I was before you over here. How can you do this? Blah, 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 blah. You, you might be right, you might be right, but you're not smart. Why? Here is opportunity to teach something very valuable to kids. And the kid says, mommy, we were before her, why? Why she got before us? Mommy says, it's okay. You have to learn how to be never there, you know, it's good. Do you, do, do, do you want me to fight with her now? I'm not gonna do it. So we're gonna wait another five minutes, another 10 minutes, okay, we say that. What a message to the children, wow. wow. My mother, she is a, a queen. She's not gonna act like I don't know what. She took it like this and said, later on every word that you saying, the kids will look at you, ah, Ima talking. Rob? Yeah. Sometimes I feel like as parents we behave a certain way and then, um, my, my, you know, some, some spouses, they feel like, you know, as a mother, you behave yourself properly. Why are children are complete opposite? Why the kids, they don't grasp the, the way you behave towards situations? Like, how do you, how do you look at a situation like that? You see, I'm not there. I don't know what's going on. Okay. Did you scream once on your kids? I screamed at them, of course. If you're screaming and one or two times you were able to control your, yourself, what do you think? That... No, like let's say, let's say when it comes to like certain uh, things like modesty or certain ways of behavior have to treat, like for an example, like Rob just gave about like, you know, to let go, to to quiet, like to let the other person, you know, Mahazma says, your mother is to quiet today, but you move like this and you're to quiet to you know, it's like. But, uh, I don't speak Russian. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I feel like Mahazma is asking me, how come you have certain attributes, character traits that you let go things and you don't fight for like things like, like or up give an excuse. Uh, like Rob give an example right now that uh, a lady cut somebody off and the mother she didn't um, she didn't fight with the lady she let her go 
Mother comes and asks me, how come the children don't learn from you? Why are they still fighting? Even though you're the type of person to get in, you don't you don't fight with people or certain like Wow. Like for an example, you're modest. Why the children are not learning to be modest from you? You know, even though we implement and we speak and we make modesty look like a beautiful thing to the children and to explain to them what what it is to be true about Mela. But no. So why? So so he wants to know how come the children have a hard time keeping the myth of their mother herself is keeping the myth very well. So if they have a proper role model in front of them, then why is it so difficult for them to do the mitzvah? Depends what yeshiva they're going to, who are their friends, mm-hmm. and what they hear in the house. There is many, many things that is coming in, into the part. It's not just that they're looking at you and it goes automatically. They may mm-hmm. thinking that Ima is crazy. My daughter once said to me, Ima, I don't know if I'll ever be like you. And I said to her, I don't expect you to be like me. I said, it took me uh, a while. It took me all these years to get to the person that I am today. And you're going to have to go through your own process in life to reach the goals that are meant for you to become the person who you're supposed to be. So did I answer her the correct way? Yes. Sometimes I feel like my kids do look up to me, but they feel like Ima's too much for me. No, so you say, of course I don't want you to be like me. You have to be much better than I am. Right. Much better than I am, and you have everything, and by Rav Bezat Hashem, you will be, I know. Right. Sometimes they, they want to test you to see how you're going to, to react. But if you're going to stay, you know. You, you they gonna... just want to know what I'm going to answer. <laughs> of course. He's a smart. <laughs> smart. So okay. if a child is struggling with a certain mitzvah and they see that this mitzvah is easy for the mother to do. So so, it's... so, so she has this, this type of yetzer uh, 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 so you have to help her. Uh, we'll, we'll find a way. You know, and but I also did notice, Rob, it also has to do with the environment of the children. I feel like because I grew up in Bar Park and my children are growing up in Queens, it, even though I didn't come from such a from, from home, um, because my atmosphere, everybody was, you know, like black stockings and always dressing modestly, I think it was much easier for me to, to keep this mitzvah than for my kids. I feel like they have more of a struggle yeah. And Queens here with the way people dress around here. I agree. I agree. But so could be that one of the reasons. Yep. Yep. In in environment is very important. Extremely important. Many, 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 many things. But we saw, you know, many incidents also that people lived not in a good environment. But they were able to isolate their, their kids and to have fun at home. They send them to the right institutions. And and it worked out for them. Yeah, yeah. It's 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 very much depends how we presenting things. Uh, we'll get to it, presentation. We'll get to it. Now, thank you. Thank you. A child, he wants to see how his parents behaving outside. Let's say you have a father that when he comes to, to shul, everything bothering him and he scream at this one, scream at, at that one. I know a child that when the people asking him, who are you? He is giving a different family name 
So they should not know that he is the son of this Abba. That's how far it can go. He don't want people to recognize him that he is the son because he is Baruch Hashem. He has no respect for his father, Bechlal, no. Actually, he's saying to me, my father destroyed my life. I don't know how can I get married with such a, such a Abba. I have to be very careful. We always want to be right. My advice to all of you, be smart, don't be right. Okay. So now, if the child sees that he's Abba fighting with everybody, everybody fighting with him, he, he looks at the, his father. And the child is ashamed. Child is ashamed. Once I heard in my own news a child saying to his mother, Ima, I want you to come to PTA. It's about it's a boys' school. What, what I want to do there? I have to send Abba and say, please don't send Abba. Why not Abba? Because the child he cannot say it. He is ashamed that he has such an Abba. So he said, Ima, you you. You come because you know how to behave. Could you imagine a child living under such stress? Sometimes you you you're fighting with a neighbor and you this one, that much. A child once told me, and I heard a, a person saying to another one, don't start with, 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 with this child. He is the son of so and, and, and so. Did you hear what I'm saying? Don't start with this uh, child. Don't talk to him because his father will chase you. Meaning that my father has zero respect. Zero. So I brought only a few you know, there are cases when the kids seeing their parents, how they behave, they saying, I'm not going to behave like that. I'll do the opposite way. There are cases like that. There are. But who wants to take the chance? Who wants to take the chance? Not advisable, no. Because it's a miracle. Usually these kids are devastated because of the lack of self of self-respect of the parents, the language. Now imagine you have no no slum bite and you argue and fighting next to the kids. Do I have to paint now a picture or you can paint a picture by yourself? How the kids are looking at you.
Can you paint every picture now? You think they will respect you? You think you're going to be able to discipline them? Every child, I'll tell you a secret. Every child that uh, their parents say to me, you know, he, he doesn't want to listen to us. Uh, my first, first thing that I will ask, well, what will I ask? I'll give you one guess, no? What will I ask? What was the question again, Rabbi? Do the parents get away, get along with each other? Have shalom bai. Right, that was my answer. Shalom bai amongst. Are you arguing next to the kids? Yes or no? Please don't you see two people have nothing to say. Come on, no. Why? Why should you listen to them? No respect, no self-respect. So why the child will follow your instructions? So why are we arguing husband and, and wife in front of the kids? For what? The bottom line is what? Who is right, who is wrong? Yes or no? Yes. Who is right, who is wrong? Right. So, so you became, you are right, but you lost the discipline of the child is worth it? Not at all, no. But, but you're right. You lost the battle, you, you won the battle, but you lost, lost the, the war. war. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Exactly. So you have to talk to yourself. I don't want to be right. I want to be smart. So many couples, so many arguing in front of the kids, saying things. You can shiver, shiver. And then they say, why the child is not listening to us? Not discipline? Are you serious? Or are you joking? Why should I listen to you? It's very important to remember that our children are very sensitive to the image that we, the parents having outside, very sensitive to kids. And they might be ashamed from every small thing that they don't like. Even things that we think it's nonsense, it's shtuyot. The kids don't see that like that. Kudav, can I ask a question? Yes. Um, are, to what extent are we allowed to let the kids be kids? So, to, so, like, so my boys, they tend to make fun of, let's say, like jokes, like with burps and this and that. No, are this, we allowed to? This is no. 
Okay, so what do I do in that situation? Because I thought at first maybe I need to be, you know, you know, accepting of it because they are, you know, kids. Yeah. So but... what do I say? You should say, do you do, do, do you know who burps in public? A pig. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Because they have a whole song about farting and pooping and this. It's like, come on. <laughs> but they're just being kids to a certain extent. So to that also, I say it's not appropriate. We, which, which yeshiva they, they, they going to? Uh, you, you don't like it. <laughs> For sure. But isn't it that kids just being kids, especially boys? Not like that. No? Okay. In a normal yeshiva, you're not going to hear something like that. Okay, so just redirect them to something more productive. Redirect the school. Okay. <laughs> All right, thank you. Rav, my kids go to a good yeshiva, and I still hear such things like that from my kids also. I feel like it's, it's everywhere now. The what? If they're not going to pick it up like in school, they can pick it up with family members or from other friends. I, I mean, think from a... members, I'm going to say it over and over again. Family members, if they have bad influence, stay away. At least keep the kids away. Enough with this, you know, living like a comuna, a kibbutz. Uh, we have to eat bach together. Uh, scrap it. Enough. Right. We, hardly, we hardly get together because of the situation, but I feel like even in school, they're still learning. Their friends are still teaching. Like my kids also sing songs like like uh, Irina just said with, uh, with Rina, whatever she said about farting and pooping and, and burping and all these things. My kids also, and they're like laughing about it. Even I tell them, you know, to the team, it's not appropriate. You know, we don't behave in such ways. They, they, they just laugh at it. Which shiva they're going to? For Shire Sion. Okay. You pick up the phone. Pick up the phone. And you speak to the principal and tell them what's going on. Who is coming up with this kind of of songs, I want to know the source. I did, Rob. And? And I wasn't successful. I feel like the school really has to care about these situations in order to make it a big deal or an issue. I feel like they cannot change the friends. You know, when I spoke to the rabbi over there, he said to me, you know, I pulled one of my kids out, and then with whatever happened, I had to pu pull them. I had to put them back in. And uh, when I spoke to the principal, he said to me that you know the problems that you were having before with the school, with the older grades, I cannot, I cannot do anything about it because the parents are already here. And he said the only change that you're going to see is only with the younger division, like UPK first grade. He says that he's like right now I'm not accepting any of those type of parents. I'm only accepting like very yeshiva shen like people were telling me oh you're so lucky that they even took your, your your daughter back because they usually do not take parents back you know so i feel like you know my daughter is in sixth grade you know she acts like very silly sometimes like she'll she'll teach her younger siblings also these silly songs even though they go to different schools my boys and i feel like the siblings are the ones that teach each other all these negative things more than anybody else okay so you have a job to, to do, and the job is you don't say any of, of this, and you say, as a rule, I don't want to hear it in this house. I tell them that, and then sometimes it comes out. I have to keep repeating myself. Don't repeat it. Say, it will cost you. So what I do I do? Like. 
I started charging them now money for every every sealed word that comes out of their mouth. Like I, I charge a quarter and we have a sheet and we write it down for every child that says like stupid or shut up or something negative to their siblings. I, I mark it down there and then I, they, I make them pay me. And you have to keep saying them, if this is the way that you're going to behave, you're not going to have any uh, friends and nobody will respect you. If that's what you want, okay. I remember, Rob, you gave me this advice last time and I didn't do it. And I feel like they still have friends. And I feel like maybe this is their friend, their friend speaking like that. That's why they don't really care what I say because like, oh, I'm still using these words. I still have friends. See, my kids, they knew that if they're going to say, I don't care, they're in big, big trouble. Just to say, I don't care. Kudam, isn't say, it a stage, though? I'm sorry, isn't it a stage, though? Aren't they going to grow out of it? Because it's like bodily functions, it's like something that they live with and all that stuff, so they cannot control it, so they make fun of it. One time, somebody, we look at them, and I tell them, you know, with disrespect, and then they'll, they'll come back to the senses. Mm -hmm. But you have to continue to say you're causing yourself a damage. Nobody will respect you with this kind of a language. Time after time after time. There are times when I ignore them myself. I tell them, until you don't learn how to speak properly, even when I'm just speaking to you. Fine. Because it's they already pushed me to that point already, you know, where I, I just I was told many times by people telling me, Oh, don't pay so much attention, ignore it. It's they're gonna become bar and bat mitzvah, they're gonna uh maturity level will will kink in kick in, they're not gonna, you know, they're gonna not say these things anymore, they're gonna realize it's very silly. But I feel like until then I still have to do my part, right? But they have to hear the message from you. Would that have been redirected somehow in terms of what jokes would be allowed? Like in terms of that, can we redirect it so they could be silly with something else rather than this? Like what? Like joke books and things like riddles and this and that. Is that better? If there is a joke, you know, that makes some sense, okay, fine, but. Uh... Okay. Rabbi, how about punishing them for this? Is that uh, okay? We will get to, 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 to punishment, but something has to be done. That's for, that's for sure. Okay. You, 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 you can, but you have to expand them. I'm warning you that this language in our house is not acceptable. You bringing Tum'ah inside the house, we don't want it. You, 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 you're gonna say it, it will cost you. Thank you. And you're gonna stick to your guns, be serious, and say, I'm sorry, we want you, that's what you want you're going to have to pay for it. But you know, they're just copying each other, like from friends, they copy okay. the so kids in the copy class. copy cost them. Every copy it costs. Okay, so they will stop. The moment that they see that you are precise and your husband is with you like a wall, they will stop. So they shouldn't be using this kind of language at home. But Not as so. far as outside. You and your husband sit down with these kids and you tell them, listen to me. This is not, we're not going to tolerate it over here. It's not a Jewish behavior. 
Mm -hmm. Rob, I think it's more of an issue with our spouses and with the children themselves because I feel like as a as a as a wife, you feel like that this is not appropriate, but you know the other spouse feels like okay, it's okay. They're little, you know, they'll grow out of it. So again, so again, we're coming to the back, you're not on the same page. No. Right, we're not on the same page. So how do you get onto the same page with 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 a husband who has a different mindset than you do? So again. If you're not on the same page, why are you asking me a question? I cannot give you any answer. You have to so get, you get on the same page. How do you get onto the same page with yourself? That's already a sound by question, right? Of course. Then you have to come over here and I have to talk to you and I have to explain you. It's... Uh, it's very easy to paint all the time the kids, but I'm telling you from my experience, the parents are always at fault. I know the parents are the issue. I know children are they're they're pure, they're smart, they're Absolutely. they're not the issue. Yeah. They're, they're not, not the issue. issue. I I know that my issues are coming from Shalom Bai's point of view, not from um, there's nothing wrong with my kids. I know there's nothing wrong with my kids. Are kids. The house, <laughs> the house, the house. Oh. Our behavior, that's all. Right. Can you explain how it's bringing Tum'ah and how we could explain it to our kids? Because I tell my kids that we create negative angels and we say bad words and disrespect each other, but is that also to the same level? See, in your case, it, 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 it's a problem. Because uh, where they going to school, the, well, no one talking, no kdusha, no tuma, no klum, and, 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 and you're going to sound like a No, they actually do. They actually, they do talk about kdusha and all that. They talk a lot about it as well. How can you talk about it but, but doing other things? What well, are they, kids are, they I'm, I'm, they're not learning it from the teachers. Kids are kids. No, again. What the school it is, is calling for. No, they are about respect, about Torah learning and this and that. To talk is it's very easy. I, I, I can be a diplomat. Okay. But is it really tomorrow? Like even for us, let's say to even of talk course. about something? Yeah, wow. Is it point? because we're not allowed to pray in the bath? Like, is that is that what it's leading it to? It leads to the house, a very bad atmosphere, and it gets stuck into the walls, and it's a it's a class by itself. Wow, that's really interesting. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, guys, it was nice talking to you. Our time is up. Shavua Tov. Thank you, Rabbi. Thank you so much. Whole night, Thank you so much. Nine o'clock. So, see you in person tomorrow night? What, what? Can we see you in person tomorrow night? Monday night. Ah, tomorrow night. Monday night. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. Tomorrow we're going to learn. We will start a new chapter. How to love a child. Beautiful. Amazing. Kodara, when are you going to talk about talking to teenagers? Uh, in between, you know, I'll take a break and I will bring the, the teenagers that they need a lot of love. Yes. Thank you. I appreciate it. Okay. Kodara, the outsider, can it be an aunt or an uncle, as you said? What, what? You, you, you mentioned that uh, the kids need to be speaking to outsiders, right? To understand better. It cannot be aunt or uncle? Yeah. Could be, no. could be. Could be. You just need to establish a rapport with the child, right? Yeah. Okay, thank you. Okay. Have a good night, thank everybody. You. Nice talking to you. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. I'll see you tomorrow. Thank you, Rabbi. See you in the morning. Thank you. In the morning.